So let me give you a little bit of background on Elizabeth. Uh, you know the obvious, so you know um, that she is the first IVF baby to be born in the U.S. Um, the first IVF baby to be born in the world uh, was in the U.K., and her name is Louise Brown. And it took a few years before the U.S. started to do IVF, and Elizabeth will tell you a little bit more about what that was like. And I know that we're all really delighted to have you here, Elizabeth. So thank you again for taking the time. I know you're incredibly busy, and we welcome you. Thank you. As was mentioned, I was born in 1981. Um, I was actually born in a clinic in Virginia. I don't know uh, how many of you are old enough to remember or know. Um, but at the time, IVF was actually illegal in Massachusetts. And so my mother had gone through three eptopic pregnancies. Um, and on the last one, a doctor, her OBGYN said, I don't know, I went to this conference and kind of handed her a pamphlet that was talking about IVF. And he said, I don't really know anything about it. And I, maybe it's something you should investigate. And so my parents, who, who had started the process of looking into adoption, um, decided, well, well, we'll see you know, where this path leads. And so she applied to the Jones program in Norfolk. And she was 28. She was young and healthy um, and basically just didn't have fallopian tubes, <laughs> minor technicality. Um, so they said, well, when can you get here? And that was really it. That was, she had no idea. They had really no idea what they were getting into. They didn't know much about the procedure. They, um, doctors Howard and Georgiana really just kind of earned their trust and said, you know, we're trying to do this and here are all the things that we've done in the past. So they sat down with the Jones and, you know, they could have kept their, their story private. Um, and my parents felt very strongly that, and I feel very strongly, that if our story could help just one person have a child of their own, then it was worth the lack of privacy probably for the rest of our lives. Um, and they also were given the option of, well, we can figure out the logistics to have it so that you can have your child in Massachusetts, but you can come down here for, for checkups and you know what have you. And my parents both felt very strongly, no, this is something that you all in Virginia at this clinic took a leap of faith to do. We're going to have our child here. My parents went through a whole heck of a lot to have me, a whole heck of a lot, and not just them, but the whole team really worked night and day and you know all these people and so that's why I feel like they're all my family so as much as things have changed things really still haven't um, and what's great is you know you're letting me into to someplace like that to see what you all do and that's the really important thing is for people to understand the science right and so from a very young age I had it kind of beaten into my head when people said well how were you born it was my mom's egg and my father's sperm and they were fertilized in a petri dish and put back in my mother's womb and nine months later here I am. It's very simple when you talk about it like that, right? <laughs> um, so, you know, it's, it's really not that complicated if you can, if you can dispel, distill the information down to that. And it took them a couple years. The next IVF baby in the U.S. after me took, I think he's three years younger than me, and took a while to, for them to be able to really duplicate the results that they had with my parents. But what do I think we can be doing? I think just talking is really what it comes down to. Um, and, and, and not just about the success stories, because that's the, you know, everybody likes to hear a success story. But there are real difficulties with going through IVF. I mean, the experience that my parents had is extremely rare. Yes. There was one egg. You're looking at her. <laughs> like, that doesn't happen. You know, regardless of, as a company, what your actual product is, it's very interesting because your product is actually not me, an end product of, of a child. It's really hope. Your, your product is hope. I think just having people be open and talk about their experiences is, is really, and, and, it, and I think a lot of that comes from a corporate culture. If companies can be talking about it and make it okay, um, you know, that's a big deal because it is still this kind of taboo and oh you know I I, don't, I didn't know you were going through that oh and or or somebody'll say like oh I 
my sister had IVF kids and yeah. they'll say it to me me yeah. like you know okay and I'm like that's great you know I make a bit good for you like you know it just you really have to be open about it and I've never actually asked him what was on the piece of paper but Dr. Jones had prepared a statement um, to read at the press conference if things had gone terribly wrong that day thank God he tore it up um, but I always wanted to ask him what was, what was written on that piece of paper what were you gonna what could you have said because um, it's a little daunting to know that if I had come out with, you know, four fingers on one hand or an eyelid that was droopy. IVF and many other reproductive technologies probably would have been delayed uh, for a long time. I think they still would have happened, but it, we would have, I, I don't know if I'd be speaking to you and about what you all are doing today. But it, it, is, it is very hard sometimes, um, especially when people don't agree with, with the way I was born. Um, to, to politely, you know, bite my tongue and say, well, my parents just wanted to have a baby and that's what they got. You know, I, I'm very grateful that I am a product of um, hard work, determination, and really incredible science. So, um, you know, that's what I always uh, come back to.